the book of Proverbs. Let's try to get it over with. Four more chapters. Let's go. Chapter 28. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. But the righteous are bold as a lion. For the transgression of a land many are the princes thereof, but a man of understanding and knowledge, the state thereof, shall be prolonged. The poor man that oppresseth the poor is like a sweeping rain, which leaveth no food. They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. Better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness than he that is perverse in his ways, though he be rich. Whoso keepeth the law is a wise son, but he that is a companion of riotous men shameth his father. He that by usury and unjust gain increaseth his substance, he shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law even his prayers shall be an abom shall be abomination. Whoso causeth the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit. But the upright shall have good things in possession. The rich man is wise in his own conceit, but the poor that hath understanding searcheth him out. When righteous men do rejoice, there is great glory, but when the wicked rise, a man is hidden. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Happy is the man that feareth alway, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. As a roaring lion and a raging bear, so is a wicked ruler over the poor people. The prince that wanteth understanding is also a great oppressor, but he that hateth covetousness shall prolong his days. A man that doeth violence to the blood of any person shall flee to the pit. Let no man stay him. It's kind of a COVID reference, if you ask me. Whoso walketh uprightly shall be saved, but he that is perverse in his ways shall fall at once. He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread, but he that followeth after vain persons shall have poverty enough. A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. To have respect of persons is not good, for a piece of bread that man will transgress. Very important. To have respect of persons is not good. There it is right there. For a piece of bread, that man will transgress. Boom. He that hasteth to be rich hath an evil eye, and considereth not that poverty shall come upon him. He that rebuketh a man afterwards shall find more favor than he that flattereth with the tongue. Whoso robbeth his father or his mother and saith it is no transgression, the same is companion of a destroyer. He that is proud of a proud heart stirreth up strife, but he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. When the wicked rise, men hide themselves, but when they perish, the righteous increase. Chapter 29, he that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and 
that without remedy. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father, but he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. The king by judgment establisheth the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. That's funny, right? That's cute, right? This is number four. Look, all these ethes. You, <laughs> you, the king by judgment establisheth the land. This is like what Proverbs, right? Like, you know, um, say, you know, Confucius say, well, this is like, um, it's not true, but in a way, yeah, and it isn't. It, this, this whole thing has not been sing-songy or um, strange with language, like this one sentence, but this one sentence is like how people, um, that haven't really read this um, chapter probably think about it, right? Like, look at it, right? Let's do it again. The king by judgment establisheth the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. Right? It sounds like. So, right? Doesn't it? That sounds how you would expect it to be before you read it and see that it's just, you know, full of just couple things of wisdom by King Solomon, but I don't know really what to think about it. The guy has like 900 wives. He's telling, well, he brought up twice, right? I, I can't wait for Shabbat. And because really I haven't even been through Psalms to um, do pictures or look up the words that I haven't understood, but I have marked everything. So I plan on doing that. But this is just funny and cute this and we have not heard this at all this type of language but we do hear twice um because it says it's hezekiah copying uh solomon's notes and they both uh, talk about um like if you have a bad woman you need a big house right you you gotta nothing's worse than the and it's like yeah you have 900 wives right so, some of these are okay. When I go over it, maybe I will, things will stand out to me more. Um, but yeah, look, like, death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's true, right? And that's in 18. Yeah. There's a lot of famous things that we all know. But like words like penury, I think that's usury. I'm not sure I haven't looked that up yet, but this is really cute. It just said that people, like in your head, you, the king by judgment establisheth the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. It sounds like this whole thing people would think is in like this 1611 type English this is a really a holdover because we have not experienced this type of language in all of these chapters. We're almost at the end. Okay. Quickly now. A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. In the transgression of an evil man there is a snare, but the righteous doth sing and rejoice. The righteous considereth the cause of the poor, but the wicked regardeth not to know it. Scornful men bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. If a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. The bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in until, in till afterwards. If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. The poor and the deceitful man meet together. The Lord lighteneth both their eyes. The king that faithfully judges the poor, his throne shall be established forever. 
The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. A servant will not be corrected by words, for though he understand, he will not answer. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. Wow. He that delicately bringeth up his servant from a child shall have him become his son at the length. An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man abundeth in transgression. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Whoso is partner with the thief hateth his own soul. He heareth cursing, and bewrayeth it not. There's that W in there again, like we heard a couple chapters ago. So the meaning is going to be betrayed, but it's they're using this old E, old D, O-L-D, this old English, right? Like they did with this establisheth, receiveth, overthroweth part. Okay, that's what I think. Somebody who was transcribing this, berayeth it not. Okay, the fear of a man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked. Chapter 30. The words of Agur, the son of Jekah, even the prophecy the man spake unto Ithiel, even unto Ithiel in Ukal. Surely I am more brutish than any man and of not understanding of a man. I neither learn wisdom, nor have the knowledge of the holy. Who hath ascended up into heaven, or descended? Who hath gathered the wind at, in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Two things I have required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee. And say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. Accuse not a servant unto his master, lest he curse thee and thou be found guilty. There is a generation that curseth their father that doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords, and their jaw teeth as knives, to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. The horse leech hath two daughters, crying, give, give. These are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not. It is enough. The grave in the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith not. It is enough. The eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out, and the young eagles shall eat it. 
Um, we're almost at the end. We only have one more chapter, but horse leech. Um, we found out that somebody's name had to do with horse leech, and I have to look that back up. It was something very bad. It's somebody's name. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, perhaps it's the name of a place. I'm not sure, but it's bad. He's talking about horse leeches. That's what I have to deal with today. Okay, hold on. Horse leeches. Wow. Okay. There be three things which are too wonderful for me, yea, for which I know not. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth, and saith, I have done no wickedness. For three things the earth is disquieted, and for four which it cannot bear. For a servant, when he reigneth, and a fool, when he is filled with meat. For an odious woman, when she is married, and an handmaid that is heir to her mistress. There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. You know, he's calling the ants a people. Is this still Solomon talking? The conies are but a feeble folk, yet make their houses in the rocks. Um, a coney. It sounds like it's either a mountain um, goat or it's a type of bird. The locusts have no king, yet go they forth, all of them by bands. The spider taketh hold with her hands and is in king's palaces. There be three things which go well, yea, four are comely and going. A lion, which is strongest among beasts, and turneth not away from any, for any. A greyhound, and he goat also, and a king, against whom there is no rising up. Are they talking about a greyhound dog? I don't think so. Maybe, I don't think it's the same type of greyhound that we, we have, that we call greyhounds. I'm looking all this up because I don't understand any of this. Four things, three things. I'm just reading it and then underlining it and then putting a note after it. Look later. If thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself or if thou hast thought evil lay thine hand upon thy mouth. Surely the churning of milk bringeth forth butter, and the ringing of the nose bringeth forth blood, so the forcing of wrath bringeth forth strife. Here we're almost at the end, last chapter, 31, Proverbs. Okay, here's another king. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. We haven't even heard of this guy. Who is King Lemuel? No, I pay attention. I haven't heard of him. No. Maybe in Chronicles they said his name, the other 50 billion names, but this is not somebody we have even heard of before. For sure. Absolutely. So who is this talking? The words of King... Okay, let's... The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. What, my son, and what, the son of my womb, and what, the son of my vows... Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, 
nor for princes strong drink. Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any one of the afflicted. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I like this mom already. It's true. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to, de to destruction. Praise the Lord. Open thy mouth. Judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her husband and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it with the fruits, with the fruit of her hands. She planted the vineyard. She girded her loins with strength and strengthened her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. She, she stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing. And she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her own works. Praise her in the gates. <laughs>